In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about a thing we call the running mouse. What is it? Right. In all waterborne spay casts, there we go, we need to turn the line so it's facing you, the direction of the cast. Okay? There we go. Turn the line. And to do that, we come around the spiral staircase. We know that. The sweep starts low and always inclines. And I use the analogy of a spiral staircase. You come, you start on the first step and you come all the way around and you climb this imaginary spiral staircase around you. Okay? Imaginary spiral staircase around you until you get into the de-loop position and make your forward cast. Let's have a look at the running mouse now. Well, if we come around the spiral staircase, look at that line rip on the surface. We call it the running mouse. It starts where the rod tip is and it ends just in front of me there. Let's have a look at it in more detail. It's really quite clever. Set up the circle spay. The running mouse is called that because it looks like a mouse skittering across the surface of the water, but you'll notice that it sort of crescendos and then drops. There. It's making its biggest splash there, and then it dies here. So when it dies, what's happened? Well, let's have a look. It's created our de-loop and it's died. And when it's done that, it's almost said to itself, right, I don't need to do any more, so I'm going to stop. There. Running mouse. There it's stopped. Go. And it works. That's exactly how it works. It's a visual cue. There you go. To make the forward delivery. So we call it the running mouse. It starts big and then dies there. When it dies, you make your forward delivery. But there's something very special about it, and I'll always find this astonishing. Whoever noticed this, I think is a, pretty much a genius. You can hear it. The beginning of the running mouse makes a sort of ripping noise. It goes shh, like that. Listen. Yeah? That running mouse, it goes. It's the line ripping against the water. And you could be for mistaken for thinking that the noise stops when the line is facing the direction of the cast. But it doesn't, it does something before it stops. And it's the sound of bubbles coming up. What's happening is the line, the tip of the line is turning, in this case from up there to around there. And what it's done is in that turning, it's created a little vortex, trapped some air in it, and those air bubbles have come up and made a bloop, bloop, bloop noise. It's slight, but you can hear it there, just there. I saw it and I heard it just there. So it gives you another sensory waypoint. It tells you when to make the forward delivery. Okay, so you might think to yourself, all right, that, that's neat. But what's the point of it? Well, I'm making a spay cast here and I'm sticking my D-loop underneath those bushes. Now that bush there is probably only four feet high and I'm sticking a D-loop underneath it. To do that, I need to turn and look at it because I need to position my cast and my D-loop. If I don't look and circle up, there's a high chance it's gonna catch that tree. I don't wanna do that. So I'm going to look. There you go. I'm gonna position the D-loop underneath those branches and I'm gonna go forward. But hang on, I've taken my eyes off the running mouse. So how do I know when's the right time to go? that little gloop sound. <laughs> I just think that's genius that somebody spotted that. I've turned, I can't see it. Oh, that was a big one, I heard it then. I heard a great gloop, a great load of bubbles come out and it told me go now. But I was looking at my back cast. Do it again. Yeah, I heard it then. It told me exactly when to go. So now, there you go again. Not only am I not catching the bushes in quite a tight space, but I'm making really nice spay cast, circle space with a big change of direction. And the lead has landed nice and straight. So I've got no detriment in performance. In fact, it's a, a really nice cast. 
whether I'm up against the bank or not. And the way I'm getting away with that is I'm using my ears to hear for that bubble in that running mouse. You can actually hear it there. It's that skittering across the surface. There. It's, it, it is like bubbles coming up. The sound of the running mouse is like a rip. And then you get like that. There you go.